What if I was to tell you that I got sacked from every official job that I got offered, but I was able to turn it around and build a business that makes millions in profit every single year. In this video, I'm gonna run you through the journey, how I went from unemployable to running a business that makes millions in profit every single year, whilst also living life on my terms. Let me bring you back to where it all started. 16 years of age, every morning at eight o'clock, we would get the bus into school. We'd arrive for around about 8.35 into Belfast city centre at a big bus centre called the Europa Bus Station. We used to hop off the bus and go in and grab a quick bite to eat. But when I say quick bite to eat, it was an Ulster fry. It's got soda bread, potato bread, uh, sausage, eggs, bacon, fried tomatoes. I got it all. And on top of that, I had a mug of tea with a lot of sugar in it. After that, we would then take a little trip around to the centre before we went to school and I would get a WAM bar, a Highland toffee bar, and a bottle of Porrid. So you could safely say before 8.45 when the bell went, I was probably around about three and a half thousand calories deep. And back then, I didn't train, I didn't exercise, bar my thumbs when I was playing computer games. I didn't have any value on health and fitness. And I did this for many, many years. I remember going to school one day and my eyesight was a little bit blurry. I remember looking out the side of the bus, looking at number plates and realizing, that's hard to read. And as humans, we're very good at picking up on patterns when they start to change, when things don't appear normal. And I remember distinctly thinking, something's off here. There's something wrong with my eyes. Long story short, I said to my mom, I feel a little bit off. My eyesight's going a little bit blurry and I've been to the toilet a lot. We went to the doctors and got checked out. My blood glucose levels were off the chart. They were super high. And what this essentially means was, my body wasn't metabolizing the sugar in my blood, which essentially meant that I had signs of diabetes. And I got di diagnosed at that point with type one diabetes. I started to freak out a little bit. And I remember going in to have a conversation with the diabetic head nurse at the time, a woman called Margaret. And she sat me down and talked me through everything about diabetes. I began studying all of these subjects. Now, this was at a point whenever I was just about to leave school. I remember reading textbook upon textbook, watching video series upon video series on the human body and how hormones worked. And I developed a real interest in nutrition. I developed a real enthusiasm for how food was produced, how it was put on our plates from farm to fork, and essentially how the human body metabolized it. Now, very quickly, I realized that I wanted to become a nutritionist. And I decided to go to university. I decided to go to Queen's University in Belfast and study nutrition and food technology. And I had a dream of being a dietitian. Now at the same time, I also started strength training. And I remember going to this really hardcore bodybuilding gym in Lisbon, Northern Ireland called the Rock Pit. And the Rock Pit was way ahead of its time. It was almost like the Gold's Gym of Northern Ireland. It had the best training equipment, the best bodybuilders, and everything there. I was scared to go into the weight training zone because there were so many big, muscly, macho guys down there that clearly were in some form of paramilitary organization, sold drugs, or did something illegal. So I realized that, hey, it's probably safer to stay on the treadmill. It's probably safer to stay on the recumbent bike where the guys that actually inspired me because I was coming in there out of shape, unconditioned, weak, and just diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and I saw their strength as something aspirational. Many of them told me that the gym was a sanctuary to essentially get an escape from the day-to-day -day of life and work and everything else. And I fell in love with bodybuilding. I became addicted. I read about bodybuilding all the time, watched bodybuilding all the time, and fell in love with going to the Olympia in Las Vegas and just following the whole bodybuilding scene. It was fascinating how people could actually take their human bodies to this level. And I sort of saw bodybuilding as this test of self. How can I put myself through these challenging weights, exercises and push boundaries and develop my character? I saw it as a real test of courage and a test of character. And at the same time, it was helping me manage and mitigate the complications of diabetes. So I took all that knowledge and love for bodybuilding and started competing. 
and I won and competed in many shows, including Junior Mr. Northern Ireland, Junior Mr. World, Junior Mr. Universe, Junior Mr. Britain. I was in Flex Magazine, Muscle and Fitness Magazine. I was sponsored by VSN and many other supplement companies. And I spoke all around the world at various different bodybuilding and health and fitness expos as a bodybuilder and as an educator. It came to a point in university where I had to start considering my career choices. And I always spoke with my mom about becoming a dietitian and running my own nutrition clinic or working for the NHS. And she always said to me, running a business is risky. Running a business means hiring a team, working with people, paying wages, all of this stuff that really put me off building a business. But I remember one time when I went to the gym, somebody came up to me and said, hey, could you write me a nutrition plan? You're a nutritionist, you know all this information and I've seen the transformation in your own body. And I thought nothing of it. So I typed the guy out, a nutrition plan on Microsoft Word, along with a training regime and give it to him. And he said, what do I owe you? I didn't really know what to say, so I just said 50 quid. He gave me 50 quid. And that was at the very point that I realized there's something in this. I've just sold something that I thoroughly enjoyed creating and got paid for it. Could I do this again? Five days later, his friend asked for a program. Other people in the gym started to come up and approach me. Hey, I heard that you sell diet and training programs. And I began selling one after another after another until I got to the point where I was realizing I was spending 10 hours a week building nutrition and training programs. This was before anybody else was doing online coaching programs. The only diet that you could really get was out of a Flex bodybuilding magazine or if a bodybuilder had written it down in the notepad and given it to you. And I was building out these comprehensive diet and training programs with descriptions of how everything was done, everything wed to the perfect gram, everything was done by spreadsheet. And it got to the point where I realized, hey, there's more people asking for this than I can actually provide. I'm gonna put my prices up. So I went to 100, I went to 200, I went to 500. I went to a thousand and I remember in one week, I generated more revenue than a band seven NHS dietitian, which is over 85 grand in one week. And I remember that was the point that I committed to building my business. And I remember saying to my parents, come the end of university, I'm gonna go out and build my own personal training nutrition consultancy business. There were hundreds of people that had got nutrition and training programs from me. And over time, gym owners started to recognize this. They started to bring me into seminars to speak to their clients, to educate their team. And before I knew it, I was doing consultation calls on the other side of the world, advising people on nutrition and training. I was prepping bodybuilders for shows. I was prepping bikini athletes for shows. I was prepping fighters to meet body weight requirements and everything else. I had national rugby teams, I had Olympic gymnasts, right the whole way through to Commonwealth Games athletes on my books. I was very good at what I did. Now, here's where things started to take a turn. I had accumulated all this knowledge in my mind and I remember going to speak at an ex exhibition one year and I talked about being diabetic and how I'd overcome it by educating myself, investing in myself, and essentially committing to a path of understanding what was wrong with me and how could I fix it. With all of this credibility, I was then asked to go and speak at exhibitions all over the world. And these would have hundreds, thousands of trainers, coaches, and general members of the public that would come along and listen. And I remember at one talk, I spoke about having diabetes and essentially how I thought my world was over and how I decided to actually figure out what could I focus on, what could I control, and what could I learn to improve my chances of survival. And I remember coming off the stage and somebody came up to me with type one diabetes. His name was Alan. And he said to me, that was one of the most inspiring talks that I've ever heard. I've never heard of anybody be able to do this with diabetes. We need your brain, we need your knowledge. There is nothing out there to give us the clarity, to give us the confidence on how to build muscle, on how to improve our shape, and how to lose body fat whilst also lifting weights. So I said, I've got all this knowledge, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna write the world's first book on how to get jacked, and how to get lean, and how to get fit with diabetes. So I decided to write the Diabetic Muscle and Fitness Guide, and that book still sells to this day. And I realized at that given moment that when I focused on switching my impact from one to one to focusing on one to many, where I could create a book that would go and impact millions of people, that it would grow my reputation, that it would grow my impact, would change more lives, and it would also make me more money as a business owner. Very quickly after that, I decided to create an online education portal of eBooks, videos, an educational series, and even a coaching service for people with type one diabetes. And that quickly grew into the world's largest community for people 
people with type 1 diabetes that want to build muscle. And alongside that, while I was doing that, I had a lot of coaches come up to me and ask me, hey, can you give me a few tips on how I can grow my business? And I started working with a few coaches one-on-one, -on -one, then into small group, and then eventually I led it into a small mastermind which always sold out in one single social media post. I clearly knew what I was doing. I had the knowledge of how the human body worked. I had the knowledge of how to build a business and I knew how to create demand for myself and other coaches wanted to learn. Fast forward to today, I now run Fitness Entrepreneur. Fitness Entrepreneur is the world's largest training organization for health and fitness coaches that want to step into their entrepreneurial identity, that want to build a system that really helps impact and change the world far beyond just what's required in a one-to-one -one session. That business makes millions in profit every single year, and I have got my role down to less than 20 hours per week. I've built an incredible team and use that business to fund my investments and my lifestyle. So here are a bunch of lessons that I learned throughout that journey. The first lesson is defiance. I did not like the life that was planned for me. I did not like the circumstances that I found myself in. So if you look at your life right now, if you look at the people that you hang around with, if you look at the beliefs that you have around what's meant to be normal, if you look at the current job that you're in, if you look at the current business that you're in, if you look at the money that you have, if you look at the partner that you have and you do not like it, it is your duty to change it. If you have a problem in your life, you have to ask yourself, what are you going to do about it? And there's two ways that you can do this. Number one, you can do nothing. Or number two, you can decide to have the courage to step forward. And I love the story of the villain and the hero. The villain and the hero both come from pain. In fact, everybody watching this right now has got some pain in their life. The villain has done nothing with that pain and goes out and goes after the world and thinks the world owes him something. The hero, on the other hand, says the world doesn't owe me anything, but I'm going to go out and I'm going to make my life myself. I'm going to build it. I'm going to go after what I want. I'm going to focus on what I want and I'm going to focus on what I can control. And that's what I urge you to do. And I was extremely defiant. I did not want to fall into a tight religious upbringing. I did not want to be a doctor, a lawyer, or a professional. And I certainly didn't want to work for anyone. I wanted to have control of my time. And I was just utterly defiant. I wasn't gonna let diabetes beat me either. And that defiance is what drove me. That was my activation energy. That is how I started. And I set out to improve the quality of my life. I made a choice to go after it. And when you make a choice in life, it is one of the most powerful things you can do. You know one of those moments when you're in a relationship and you just decide this is the end and that's it? That is one of the most powerful things that you can do is to make a choice to go after it. And I encourage you to focus on what you want and focus on what you can control. It's very hard to do that. When you don't focus on that and you always just focus on what could go wrong, you weaken yourself. Focus on what you want and focus on what you can control. Number two, I realized that in order to be successful, you needed three things. You needed a big, bold character. You needed to be authentically rebellious. Authenticity is rebellious in every way, shape, or form. You know what's going to be really interesting about you? All your quirks, your mannerisms, the way that you show up, your hobbies, your interests, your beliefs, your values, your approach to things. That is what makes you different than everybody else. The challenge is, is when we look at social media and we look at what other people are doing, we kind of think that we need to fall in line. But when you fall in line, you're vanilla, you're commoditized, you're like everybody else. People want to see your authentically rebellious side. So do not be afraid to show the real you. And if you've ever posted on social media before, you will know that your most vulnerable, realist posts are the ones that get the most attention, the most relatability, and also inspire people the most to go after the things that they want in their life. The next thing is you need a cause. You need a cause bigger than yourself. And my cause was very simple at the start. I wanted to educate and improve the lives of everyone with diabetes that wanted to build the best physique possible, that wanted to be the strongest versions of themselves, that wanted to have more energy, and wanted to be the best possible mothers, fathers, sons, daughters that they could be. Then my mission changed. As I grew my personal training business and I became overworked, stressed, and running a business, I realized that there was a smarter way to do it. And I went on a mission to turn coaches into entrepreneurs. I was fed up of seeing coaches work 50, 60 plus hours per week, be underpaid, and essentially never be able to enjoy the life that they had. 
And the fact that they decided to set up a business for one main reason, to get freedom, but never were able to achieve it, was my mission. I wanted to help coaches build a business that allowed them to live life on their own terms. And number three is commitment. You know one of the biggest things that's gonna protect you from actually failing is staying in the game. The reason why so many people give up is because it's tough. So if you're going through a really tough circumstance right now, your business isn't growing, clients are giving you a hard time, you can't find the right team members, or your team is super hard to manage, well, that's where most people give up, and I wanna encourage you to keep going. Number three, you are in the best position to advise your younger self. If you're watching this, there's a very good chance that you wanna start your own business or already have your own business. And essentially, you're using the skills that you acquired from when you were transforming yourself. So essentially, in many ways, your current customer is the younger you. There are three things that I want you to focus on. Number one is you. Who are you? The founder. What is your backstory? So when you look at your events, go from worst to best. Outline your five worst chaotic events in your life. Then, on the other side, outline your five best, most triumphant events in your life. What are the five beliefs that have really allowed that to happen? What are your five core beliefs about building a great life? Those are the beliefs that shape everything in your business and everything that you do. They are your philosophy. The next thing is you need to focus on the what. What is your expertise? What is your experience? What are you the best in the world at? My expertise is finding the constraint in a business that's holding it back from growing, whether it's a founder's belief set, whether it's the wrong team in place, whether it's a marketing problem, a sales problem, I find that constraint, release it, and unlock scale. So what is your expertise? What is your experience? How can you add value to someone? And then the how is your mechanism the identity that you create for people, the results that you create for people. When you combine those things, the identity that you create for people, the mechanism and the results that brings them into their lives, that gives you an overarching framework to really spill your business into. And the best thing is to build it according to how you wanna build it and see who comes. And when you tailor it like that, the people that come into your world are the people that are gonna be your best performing clients. The fourth thing is that in order to scale, you need to identify and release your constraints. A constraint is gonna be one, a limiting belief, two, a lack of skill, or three, a lack of process on how to go to the next level or achieve the next level of success in your business. There are so many of you that wanna scale and have this idea of doubling your business, but the reality is you're focusing on the wrong things. Do you know what? Your next level of growth lies in the things that you are avoiding. So find the things in your business that you know you're avoiding that you should be doing and act on those things. Most of you that wanna double your lead flow or double your sales couldn't actually handle the clients that come with that. So just think, what do I need to fix inside my business first before I start driving more customers to it? In many cases, it's actually the quality of the product. In many cases, it's you getting out of your own way and building the team to handle the additional flow of clients that you take on. So always think, if I were to double my business, what would break? Those are the things that you need to focus on. Number five, growing a business is a combination of pushing and pulling. Pushing where you're driving sales, driving growth, driving implementation, and pulling is when you are resting. Resting and taking thinking time to think about your vision and where you're going with your life and also pulling out of things that you shouldn't be doing. Hiring people smarter than you. Hiring people that are more talented than you. Hiring people that have got more time and energy than you to do things that you aren't great at or don't know how to do. There's this real myth that people have that no one can do something as good as me. And the fact of the matter is, that is a myth. There are people out there that can do it better than you, faster than you, at a price far cheaper than what you're costing your business. Number six is to be in the proximity of heroes, mentors, and peers. Heroes are people that you really look up to, people that have achieved fascinating heights of success, that you admire and respect in every way, shape, or form. Now, you might not come in contact with these people regularly, it might only be once a year or once in a lifetime, but these are the people that really inspire you to go after your dreams. Mentors are people that have done something that you want to do, and like to teach it, and are showing you how they did it. And peers are essentially people that want to achieve the same thing as you. 
When you surround yourself on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly basis with these three types of people, you can only but expand your thinking. You can only but remove blind spots. You can only but learn from their mistakes and radically accelerate your life forward. The right people will save you decades of pain and frustration. So make sure that you are in the rooms where you are getting your belief systems tested and your vision expanded. Number seven is realizing that you can outgrow your customers or they can outgrow you. When you outgrow your customers, they want to follow because they see you advancing yourself. I remember one time at an event at my house, I had a bunch of clients around. And one of the clients said out loud when we were around the fire pit that the only reason why I stay in this community is because Phil Graham is always pushing themselves to do new and bigger and better things. And I wanna be in the proximity of somebody that does that. So make sure that if you have got a business that you are demonstrating how you are investing in yourself, recreating yourself, putting yourself through challenges and essentially always growing your life and your business opportunities because that's why people are going to follow you. Show them that you are an action taker and most importantly, that you go first. That is the reason why people follow you in the first place because you have gone first. On the other hand, your clients can outgrow you and when they outgrow you, they leave because they lack certainty. Remember, your certainty is what's going to feed everybody inside your tribe, inside your community. Your certainty is what's going to attract customers. And if you lack certainty, customers are gonna sense it and they're gonna leave, especially during challenging times. So the question you've gotta ask yourself is, are you outgrowing your customers or are they outgrowing you? How can you keep outgrowing your customers? What things do you need to be focusing on? What things do you need to be showing? And how do you need to be operating? Next is always asking yourself, how can you get results faster than anybody else in the marketplace? As a CEO, your role is to be the most relevant option in the marketplace. That means asking yourself and your team, what do our customers and what do our market need right now? At this given time, at this moment, what do they need right now? What language do they need to hear? What deliverables do they need to see? What support do they need to get? and what bonuses, what offers do they need to see in the marketplace in order to buy in. As markets change, as the world changes, your customers' needs and problems also change. So you need to make sure that you are the most relevant option in their life at any given moment in time. That's how you win. Most importantly is to realize that everything in life and business that challenges you is for the growth of your soul. If you look back at anything in your life, anything that you find challenging, anything that you find chaotic, you will realize that it has served you. And as the saying goes, every cloud has a silver lining. And when you realize that by looking back at your past, what is the point in worrying? Think about it. If you're going through a situation right now where you're experiencing a lack of sales, you're overworked and you're tired, this is actually radically accelerating your life forward. You just have to find meaning in it and you have to use that meaning to actually take action on the things that you've been avoiding. Because the things that you are avoiding are the very things that hold the keys to your growth, are the things that hold the keys to the life that you really wanna live. So understand that worrying doesn't serve you. I used to realize when I first started in business that I used to worry all the time about making money, about always making sure that I didn't go broke, and essentially, it was a great activation energy, but it was very hard to sustain. So making sure that you're operating from a calm, collected place is one of the most important performance enhancers in your business. And the last lesson is really simple. Most of us start out in business because, well, we wanna prove other people wrong. We don't wanna go broke. We maybe were bullied as a kid. We don't wanna be left alone. We don't wanna be isolated. We wanna be the center of attention. Heck. There's a range of different reasons why you started a business. Maybe your boss was rude to you, maybe your parents told you that you couldn't do it. Who knows? Regardless, that initial energy that you use to start the business, that dark energy, is great for activating you, but it's hard to sustain. Because the challenge is this. If your number one goal isn't to go broke, you need to realize that that is not a valuable mission to pursue over the course of your life. It is a temporary catalyst to get you to take action. And the most important thing is that you look back at your past and realize, why do I feel this way? And actually realize that if you look at your life right now and you compare it to who you were in your past as a young child or a young teen, if they were to meet each other, your younger child or your younger teen would be absolutely fascinated by what you've achieved right now. 
And if you look at that life that you were living when you were a younger child, you will say to yourself, this is all inside you. You're 100% capable of doing this. And when you're able to connect those two individuals, the person that you are right now, and the child or the teen that you were whenever you were going through all that experience in your life where you thought your world was falling down and thought everything was going wrong and reconnect the two and bring that younger child, bring that younger team on a journey with you, it's a very exciting ride. That child or that teen doesn't know how to run the business that you have right now. And the events that they went through and how they infiltrated your central nervous system and make you look at every single challenge in your life right now as a threat to that younger child no longer rules you. So my advice to you is this, don't let your inner child, don't let your inner teen rule your business anymore. Look back at your life when you were a child, look back at your life when you were a teenager, whenever you had a chaotic event, and ask yourself, what would I say to them right now if they were standing in front of me? What would they say to me if they were standing in front of me? And you'll find that the conversation will go like this. Your current self will say to your younger child, you've got all of this inside you. You're amazing, you're powerful. Your younger child will say to you, you're the person I always wanted to become. And I want you to do something really quickly. Close your eyes and imagine the two individuals hugging together. And you could say one thing to each other before you could go. And imagine the two souls fusing together and say, I love you to each other. Your current self to your younger self, your younger self to your higher self. And bring those two into one and start operating from a mindset and a heart and a soul of abundance rather than a fear of failure, fear of going broke, that operating system will allow you to be peaceful, calm, and operate at a truly different level and navigate challenges in a different way and be able to command your emotions, command your heart, and go after what you really want in life and do your bit to change the world. You live an incredible life and it's only just begun. And the goal of this channel is really simple. I want to inspire you to live life at your fullest. I've been told that I was going to die young, have kidney failure, organ failure, and essentially that I was a failure, that I was never going to be able to be employed. And I built a business that makes millions a year and I live life on my own terms. And that has been a journey. And I want to share with you the lessons on how I did that. I don't need to do these videos but I know that there are entrepreneurs out there that are overworked, that are stressed, that are building a business purely just to not go broke, building a business to be the center of attention, building a business to essentially look better than their competitors. These are all the wrong reasons to build a business. And I wanna really give you an insight into how to play the game behind the game. And that is the reason why you're building a business. And the most important thing you need to realize is that you need to design the life that you wanna build first and then build the business to fit that. Don't build the business first and then build the life after it because you'll never get to live it. When you're caught up and trapped in your own business and you never get the time to enjoy the money that you make or the impact that you make, you never get the opportunity to live life on your terms. And that's not what business is about. The very reason you decided to take the courage and become an entrepreneur was for one main reason, freedom. And that's what I commit to helping you achieve in this channel. I want to inspire you. I want to give you the thinking tools. I want to give you the no-nonsense problem-solving insights on how to do that. And I have a wealth of wisdom to share. Lots of love.